Stan, Stan. Stan, you've been sitting much too long, much too long. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Truth, a radio program designed with you in mind, a program whose sole purpose is to empower you, our listeners, for information leads to knowledge, and knowledge is you got it, power. And as always, I want to empower you to take control of your life, those things that impact you, your family, and your community. As always, too, I want you to go to the website at www.gwen-truth.com so you can access all those resource listings that make you all powerful. Yes. <laughs> and I seriously mean that. I really, really, and truly want you to be powerful. And knowledge does make you powerful. It makes you and enables you to do those things that you need to do that will help you, your family, and your community, that will help you to be able to navigate your way through life. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Uh, I was talking to a young lady at, uh, I know she's listening tonight. Hi! Uh, <laughs> uh, at the bank um, recently, and she was saying, you know, you say a lot of uh, amens, and uh, let's see, what's the other thing? God bless, and... Um, Praise God, especially praise God. I said, you know, it just slips out. It's just a part of me. But I do praise God. <laughs> and I do thank Him for everything. I really and truly do. And, you know, whatever it is that, that you praise, that you worship, hey, do that. Do that throughout the day because it will make your life better and it will make you feel better. You know, and it's not saying that you don't have some control over what's going on in your life. Uh, but it's good to know that there's always someone else, too, who has your back. So, uh, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, do want you to go to the website so you can take part in the uh, opinion poll that I have going. And it's asking about gambling and whether or not you think that is truly an avenue that our legislature should take to try to overcome the deficit uh, that we have in place. Uh, there are, um, you know states around the country who are going that direction, who are uh, doing that, and um, and I would just want to hear from you as to whether or not you think that is a viable option uh, for the legislature, given, which has been proven, uh, some of the negatives that come along with that and actually uh, do hurt uh, families and hurt individuals and the like, but uh, does the risk uh, and the uh, do the negative impacts um, actually kind of counter the gains uh, that they feel uh, would come with the gambling. So let me know. Uh, go ahead and go on the website www.gwenhypertruth.com so you can weigh in on the gambling issue. As has been stated, I'm going to ask me it was former city commissioner, retired city clerk, city of Daytona Beach, and president and CEO of AE Enterprises, Inc., a consulting firm on politics and ethics. Uh, tonight, uh, we're just going to go ahead and get right on into the show because uh, the subject that we have tonight is a very, very important subject. They all are. <laughs> That's why I bring them on. Uh, but the subject tonight is important because it has to do with children and it has to do with a program that helps uh, children who are um, neglected um, and abused and it's a way of our helping in that situation and this program is called the Guardian at Lightem program. Uh, it is a program that but we have guests that are here uh, from the west side of the county, the Deland area and around. Uh, they also service, you know, this program exists statewide and uh, we have the same program in Volusia County, Flagler County, and the like as well. And I am a proud uh, volunteer of that program on the east side. And one of our volunteers who is suffering from a cold, um, I'll mention Edie, uh, <laughs> who, uh, who serves on the, uh, on the committee to actually uh, try to get uh, more volunteers, to re recruit more volunteers uh, for the program. And so we're going to have the, the chair of that program, Jill Carroll, who's going to talk about that. But we're going to start with the assistant uh, circuit director of the Guardian of Lyon program, uh, who is in the land, uh, Joe. Is it Tubman? Tubman. Tubman, okay. And uh, tell us and share with us, if you would, if you would, um, what is the Guardian at Lightem program, and um, and why is it important to have that program uh, in this 
county, but also in this state. Uh, because we know, as with so many other programs, that there's a, there's always a funding issue. There's always some issue or, or reg in regard to, is this a program that we should continue funding? Is it actually meeting the needs? So tell us first, what is the program? Why is it important? And, uh, and then let's get into, um, in talking with, with um, Jill, I was going to say Carol, but Jill Carol, in talking with Jill, um, what it is that uh, that's required of the volunteers, and you might start a little of that, and, um, and and what you do as a volunteer, and why you feel it's just so important to do that. So I'll, I'll reiterate some of these as we go forward, but right now, what is the Guardian Ad Litem Program, and why is it key and important? The Guardian Ad Litem Program is a volunteer-based organization that is state-funded, that represents abused and neglected children in the court system, in the dependency area. When children are removed from their home due to abuse, abandonment, and neglect, they go in front of a judge. And uh, it's pretty scary for a child to be there alone. You know, they, they see their mom and dad, they've been taken from their home in the middle of the night. They don't understand these things. But the guardian ad litem, they're there to speak for their best interests and what they need. Make sure that those children don't fall through the cracks and have somebody to look up to. It's the constant in their life during this court proceeding. It's so important because I've been with the program for 23 years, and I have seen so many children reunited with their families, stronger families. I've seen children that um, have been terminated from their parents be adopted, and it's the force behind the guardian and Lightroom volunteer that helps that child through that. Uh, volunteers are the most wonderful people in the whole world. This is not something um, that gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling like handing flowers you know, this is a very important job for these volunteers. They give of themselves and um, very unselfishly. You know, they fall in love with these kids. And it's amazing how many volunteers we have that stay with us 10, 15, 20 years. And that's definitely a constant. Their caseworkers change, judges changes, therapists changes. But the volunteer is committed to that child for the length of the case. To me, that that sums it up. It's the greatest program that ever was made. And, and so people know, too, um, it's not just the guardian ad litem program that's working with the family, working with the kids. Uh, uh, it really is a total um, uh, a concept that brings a lot of agencies together and working for whatever is the best uh, for those children. Correct. And uh, guardian ad litem is the representative before the court. Uh, but the other, what are the other agencies that are, are part of that umbrella of services that are available there and that really work uh, with these young people to make sure that life continues in, a, in as good a way as it possibly can for them? I'm very proud of this county because of the different agencies. We all work together as a team. You have Community Partnership for Children, which is the case management. You have a Department of Children and Families, which have their investigators. You have um, Devereaux Children's Home Society, Florida United Methodist Children's Home, and we all work together as a team to provide the services that the family and the child needs. If we're in constant communication with each other. It's not an adversarial situation. We're all there for one reason, and that's to help the child. So um, our agencies are very committed, just as we are, and that child has a support system probably they've never had before. And uh, having been a volunteer, um, as, as are you, Jill, you're a volunteer, yes, and, and you are a part of the committee, actually chairing the committee, to try to get other people to volunteer their services. Um, having been a volunteer myself, I can tell you that it's one of the most rewarding things that you can ever do, uh, uh, you know, alongside really being a parent yourself. Uh, it is just that rewarding. And to know that you have uh, the opportunity to be a positive influence in the life of a child and in their life situation because these children grow up and become whatever adults uh, they actually see in their parents or see in other adults that they're exposed to. And uh, they get from their parents or that life situation, whatever they're involved in, that self-concept of who they are. And if they're treated cruelly and they're treated like crap, then they believe that that's all their worth is, crap. Correct. Uh, 
And uh, to have the opportunity of actually changing that and seeing that change in them. Uh, I have to say this, Jill, uh, uh, before, before you start. I, I worked with this family um, about a year ago. I, I worked with them for a little over a year. And um, I had the opportunity at a funeral about three weeks ago to see the mother and the two young children <laughs> at this funeral service. And I mean, there was such a change from what I had seen over the year or so that I was with them. Uh, she was very uh, nicely dressed, appropriately dressed, which had been an issue. Um, the children were very well dressed and nicely dressed, which had been an issue. Um, they were um, somewhat well behaved. They were running a little bit over the place, but that's okay. That's what children do. And, um, you know, she saw me and we hugged and, and we said, you know, nice little, you know, things to, to each other. And, of course, then she had to run and catch up with him. But uh, it was just such a rewarding um, um, time for me to see where they had, where they had come to from where I knew they had really started. And, um, and I know that, it, you know, it wasn't just me, it was all of these agencies that were working together to work with this parent to get her to the point where these children could actually live uh, in an environment that encouraged their positive development and growth. And um, the role that we had all played in that, I mean, to see that, it was just phenomenal. And I'm sure that that's something that is experienced almost every day every in day. terms of those dealings with, with family members and with, with the children. And the major goal I know is always to try to keep the, um, and restore that the parents with the children. But in situations where that cannot be the case, then, then you work to do whatever is in the best interest of the children. Uh, but share it with us, um, Jill. Uh, what is it that, that you value in terms of your volunteerism with the program and why do you think it's so important for other people to do the same? It would be my pleasure. Um, I moved to uh, Florida about uh, a year and a half ago from the Carolinas and before I got ready to make that move I began to research where I wanted to spend uh, the majority of my volunteer uh, time and uh, where was my where did I fit in in the land of Florida? Not thinking that I would even be coming to uh, the land. <laughs> and uh, I've worked in uh, the field of uh, social work, working with abused and neglected children and um, abused women for my professional career. So as I got ready to leave that career, I thought, what am I going to do in the land, Florida? And I had opportunity as a professional to know the Guardian at Lighten program in several states I had lived in. And I made a promise to myself. And that was when I ever got that opportunity to have time to volunteer, that um, it would be with the Guardian at Lighten program. So a little over a year ago, uh, my husband and I made this uh, journey to Deland, Florida. And it was the end of February and I called the Guardian at Leiden office and uh, lo and behold uh, it was meant to be because the next training was uh, starting in March. <laughs> so as a volunteer I had some paperwork that I needed to do for the program and I'm sure Joel will uh, explain that to us later. But uh, quickly filled out that paperwork. Also I had to have references, got my references called and uh, I think I had lived here about 15 days when I began going down to the historic courthouse in uh, Deland for my uh, training. And um, now we have opportunity uh, also to take that training online. So there is some flexibility that mm -hmm. if you're not able to uh, attend a training throughout the day that you can do an online training. And uh, after several hours of training and sitting um, in the courts and uh, going through my graduation, uh, I became a guardian, something that I've waited probably 30 years to uh, be able to do. And uh, you are, you're the voice of the